Hello, I'm welcome again to another day of classes. Today we're going to be starting with the unit 10. We're going to be continuing with the interchange 5th edition level 2, the blue book. And as always, we're going to be starting with the language summary, the language summary for this unit or the vocabulary for this lesson. Okay, so let's start right in. Okay, here we have accountant. It's a qualified person who is trained in bookkeeping and in preparation, auditing and analysis of accounts. This is basically the people that help you with your bank accounts and in your business, like they control what, how much money you're earning and how much money you're spending in order to do the most of it. Okay, so the accountants are the people that help you with the money. Activities director. An activities di uh, director, also known as recreational therapist. Oh, it's also known as a recreational therapist. Activities directors work with individuals with disabilities or illness and plan and implement activities intended to improve their patient's physical, social, and emotional health. Okay, so the activities directors or recreational therapist ten try to help different people by doing a series of activities. Perhaps this woman right here has Parkinson's and her uh, hand moves a lot. So, in a way to improve their patient's physical development, uh, they try to paint in order to, you know, feel better. Hmm. It's, this is a really interesting job. Agent. It's an independent person or legal entity which acts on behalf of another principle. An agent basically it's like if it's an agent of the force of you know the police it's a person that uh, works for another person to do their purposes. So if you have the the police officers they are agents of law. They want to enforce and they want to continue having the law in the society that we have so they are the agents of that we also have the agents of you know housing people that want to sell to sell houses those can be called agents as, as well architect it's a person who designs buildings and in many cases also supervises their construction you know these are the people that imagine how a building will be an artist. An artist is a person that basically develop any kind of artistical way, so to say. It can be painting, it can be um, mod modulating, it can be singing, it can be all different stuff. A flight attendant. These are the people that help you when you're on an airplane. They bring you the food or something or if you have any questions, you ask them. They are there to support you. A journalist. The journalists are the people that wants to get to know the truth on everything that happens in a city, a town, in a society, basically. They tend to investigate uh, things that happened in a place or anything. Marine biologist. It's a biologist of the sea, basically. As you can see, I don't know why is this person with this right here. I don't know if you can use it underwater, but he's doing a pretty good job. Reporter. The reporter are the people who report. Yes. Oh my God, I'm, I'm, I'm so intelligent. Okay, now. Well, the reporters are the people that go to the scenes of the news. Basically, if there is a hurricane, if there is an accident, they go to the specific place where it happens and they comment about it right there. A stock broker. The stock brokers are the people that work with your stocks of your company. You know, the stocks are the basically the value that can have a part of your con of your country, you know, of your business, of your company. Let's say you have a hundred stocks to be 100% of stocks in a company. The stockbroker try to sell it, to, to gain more value for those, those stocks in order to, so your company gets more money or has a better value. 
a teacher. That is what I am right now, what, what I'm doing. Okay, a teacher is a person that helps you learn things that you don't know, trying to put it in ways that you can understand. That's why, for example, sometimes I get, we can read this, for example, we can see what is an agent in this definition, but maybe you're uh, still a bit confused with what it is, so I try to explain it in a different way. That's what a teacher does. Video game tester. Well, these are not testers, but oh well. A video game tester is basically a person that tries all of the different uh, vari variations in a specific part of a game to make sure that everything is correct and there are no errors. A video game tester might, might, sound, might sound like a really fun job, but it can be also stressing, because you're not gonna be just playing video games all day. Well, you're gonna do that, but you're gonna be playing the same specific point in a game just to see if there's any errors in any part of it, okay? And that doesn't look pretty fun. Imagine that you're playing Super Mario, and the only thing that you need to do is to jump in a specific place in multiple directions. Jump there, then you come back. Jump there, then you come back. And that over and over again for hours, that is not so fun. But video games are fun. Agreement. An agreement is when different parties, it means different uh, people or institutions, agreed, say yes, to uh, a specific type of contract or, you know, rule that for both of them uh, will be good. For example, when you get a job, both your employer and you, the employee, have an agreement that you're going to start working and they are going to start paying you. That is an agreement. When two different parties or two different people or two different um, companies or anything agree, say yes to something. An applicant. The applicants are the people that want to get a job. All of these people want to get jobs, so they can be known as applicants. The moment that you send your resume to a company, for example. An article. An article, it's basically a piece of information written about something. In this case, we have uh, in the Houston Business Journal, a journal for business, we have this article called Oil Field Service Companies Must Effectively Use Their Legal Rights. And this person is going to talk in these paragraphs the, his opinion about this topic. And this is an article. You can have articles about much different things. Bug. A bug is a very small insect. insect. Like a spider can be a bug. The flies can be a bugs. The honeys can be bugs. All of those. Also, something interesting about bugs is that in software or in and things related to computer, a bug can be an error. That is when something is not going as it was planned to go. Okay? And to connect it with the video game testers, the video game testers look for bugs, uh, looks for bugs in the video games, okay? Career. A career or the uh, a career is basically a type of profession that is focused in a specific type of um, knowledge. Maybe your your career is about medicine and helping the physical body of people. Maybe your career is construction or architecture. So you're you are putting all your effort into building uh, buildings or houses and stuff. Okay, there are mul multiple careers. A co-worker. It's a worker that works with you. It's like your partners, but in a job environment, in a work environment. Sorry. Deadline. That is the latest time or date by which something should be completed. The deadline is the last moment to do something. For example, if your teacher uh, gives you or assigns you a homework on Google Classroom and you have until... 11.59 a.m. or p.m. to send it. After that time, you're late, and then in that can have consequences. 
Business deal. Business deals refer to a mutual agreement. It is a mutually binding contract or communication between two parties who want to do business. Okay, so it's a type of contract about business. And as you saw, it's an agreement as well. Decision. A decision, it's basically when you have multiple options of things to do, but you decide you choose only one thing. That is your decision. You can have you can make it the right decision or the wrong decision or just a decision. A device. A device is any type of a smart or electronic thing that can be, for example, a cell phone, a tablet, uh, some glasses, technology glasses, um, cameras, etc. I don't think we're gonna be seeing this like this anywhere in the future. That's why we have the, you know, the watches, the Apple Watch or the Android Watch, etc. Employee. It's a person employed for wages or salary, especially at non-executive level. These are the people that work in a company that they are not the CEO or the boss or the chief. Experience. Experience is the knowledge or mastery of an event or subject gained through involvement in or exposure to it. Exposure to it. In other ways, experience is knowing how to do things because you have already done it in the past. Maybe you know all of these things. You know what is this, you know what is that, you know what is this, you know what is that, but you don't know how to use it or how to put it together. But when you have experience, when you have tried uh, once and again and again and again doing it, then you know how to put them together in order to have the best results. That is experience. Honesty. Honesty is a facet of moral character that connotes positive and virtuous att attributes such as integrity, truthfulness, straightforwardness, including straightforwardness of conduct, along with the absence of lying. Honesty is when, you, is when you tell the truth. That's it. Honesty is when you tell the truth and you work in a good way in all type of situations. Okay, We have a lot of definition here, but it's just that. Doing the good thing and telling, and telling the truth. Honesty is the first chapter in the book of wisdom. Thomas Jefferson. And wisdom is when you have a lot of knowledge or know how to do things. Overseas. In or to a foreign country, especially one across the sea. So something that is overseas is over the sea. It's a country that is over the sea. That you need to travel, you know, over the sea to get there. Over time. Overtime is the amount of time someone works beyond normal working hours. If you work from 8 in the morning until 5 in the afternoon and you continue working until 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, you're doing overtime. And that is really bad. You get more money though, but that is really bad. Personality trait. Personality traits are distinguishing qualities or characteristics that are the embodiment of an individual's. Oh my god, that is so fancy. They are your habitual patterns of behavior, temperament, and emotion. Another way to see this, a personality trait is how your personality is. If you're extroverted, if you are shy, if you are a happy person, if you are grumpy, you get angry really fast, and that is something that can define you, that is your personality trait. A personality trait of myself, Eric, I would say that is being, uh, you know, optimistic or optimistic or a happy person. That can be a personality trait of me. Okay, pressure is when you put a lot of things on top of another. It's like if you put a lot of pressure in a ball or in an egg, let's think of an egg, the egg can crash and you can have also work pressure that you have to do a lot of things a lot of things and you don't have a, a specific amount amount of time and that makes you stressful so that can be pressure too public speaking public speaking is when you work, uh, you speak in public hmm. i can think that i'm 
public speaking right now because I'm talking with a lot of people, all the people that watch my videos, I'm talking to them. But the problem is that public speaking, you specifically need a public listening to you and you usually need to see your their faces. This can be problematic for a lot of people. Relationship. A relationship is when you are with boyfriend or girlfriend of a boy or a girl, like when you have a romantic relation with them. Resume. The resume or curriculum vitae, also known or CV, it's a description of your person and your knowledge in your professional area. This is usually used to, you know, to apply for a job. Special skills. Special skills are type of skills that are not so common or it's not founded in all of the people. Some special skills can be communication, time management, leadership, personal skills, teamwork, flexibility, public speaking. You know, public speaking can be a special skills. If you have no problem speaking in front of a lot of people, that's public speaking. That is a special skill. I think I have that one. A stock market. This is where the stockbrokers are. They try to sell actions of different uh, of different companies and try, and try to buy and sell, and it's kind of a mess. I don't. I wouldn't like to be there. A straight talk. It's a speech that is very honest and direct. When you're talking straight, you're not uh, putting you know a different type of way to say things to put it. Better no 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 you're talking direct to the point you are not fulfilling your job in this company so we will have to kick you off or fire you that is a straight talking it's not that you are um, being rude or something they can feel people can feel that they are being rude with them if you talk like this but this is not being rude this is just talking honestly and directly timetable. A timetable, ta it's like a fixed schedule where we have the specific activities for a specific times. This can be a timetable for a school, you know, a, school, a grade in a, in a school. That the first the Monday, they have the line one, then recess, then line two, lunch, line three, tutorial, teach, assessment, and preparation. Adjectives, let's see some adjectives. Attentive. When you're attentive, you're Paying attention. Broke. When you're broke, it's when you have no money. Zero amount of money. Zero pesos. Creative. When you're creative, it's when you have a lot of ideas and it's really easy for you to make something artistic. Critical. Critical people make rude comments, judge or decisions. Talk at length about what we are doing wrong or rarely have anything nice to say. When you're critical, like a critical person, you're saying all of the different things that needs to be improved. They will not focus on the good things because they think that if it's good, you don't need to change anything. So they will only focus on what you need to change. People, people usually hate these kind of people, but they are necessary. Cross-cultural, cross-cultural, relating to different cultures or comparisons between them. So, cross, you have multiple culturals, cultures. Okay, developing country, a poor agricultural country that is seeking to become more advanced economically and socially. We are in a developing country. We are trying to make this country better in different aspects. Okay. So we are developing. Disorganized is the opposite of organized. So everything is all over the place. Efficient. Something that is efficient is when you make all of your efforts worth more. Like you're making that all of the things that you're doing are good and make everything easier for you. Work smarter, not harder. Actually, you should work hard and smart, both of this at the same time. Forgetful. Something that is forget someone that is forgetful is someone that forgets everything really, fa really easy. It's like they tell you, oh, come on, I need you to do this for me. And you say, okay, but then 
you don't do the thing and it's like, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot. If you always do that, then you can, we can say that you're forgetful. Generous. Someone that is generous is someone that gives to the others with no problems. So it's like, yeah, yeah, come, have this. That is a person that is generous. Hard working of a person. It's tending to work with energy and commitment or being diligent. Someone that is hard working, it's a person that works a lot and works hard and feels good about it. It, it wasn't be, you know, this person will not be saying bad things like, oh my God, I have a lot of stuff. I don't want to do this. No, no, no. They will be working and working and working and they will not complain. Impatient. It's having or showing a tendency to be quickly irritated or provoked. So, someone impatient is someone who doesn't wait. They need to have everything right now, or else they will be mad. Lazy. It's unwilling to work or use energy. If you prefer to do nothing in all, at all times, you're lazy. I'm sometimes lazy. Level-heated. It's calm and sensible. If you're level-heated, you're always thinking straight you're not like you know exaggerating things or feeling worse than you should it's the opposite of impatient if you're level heated you're calm you're sensible you, you you think the thing you think the things that you need to do moody it's given to unpredictable changes of mood especially sudden bouts of gloomness or sullenness okay so moody is a person that changes moods really fast like, at one moment you're happy, and the other moment you're worried, the other moment you're, you know, excited, the other moment you're angry that it's moody. 9 to 5. 9 to 5 is the standard time of, like, working in the United States. Usually, here in the Dominican Republic, it's the same, but 8. 8 to 5. Organized. When you're organized, it's when everything has a place and a specific way to find it. It's the opposite of disorganized. Patient. The opposite of impatient. A pa uh, someone that is patient doesn't have problem waiting for things to happen. As you can see, this person right here is impatient and this one is patient. Well, maybe she's not working and that's why he's angry. But she is patient. Punctual. Being punctual shows that you value and respect others. You care, you're responsible, you value yourself and you have integrity. Basically, being punctual is always coming to the places that you are supposed to be in on time, okay? So, if you need to be in your classrooms or taking your classes at 8 o'clock, you're, you're there at 8 o'clock or even some minutes earlier. If you are, uh, if, you, if you come at 8.10 or something, then you're unpunctual. You're not punctual. Reliable. Consist consistently good in quality or performance, able, able to be trust, trusted. Something reliable is something that you can trust, something that you can say, you can say okay, yes, I'm going to do it. For example, this person needs to be reliable for this girl, because if not, she might have a really big problem. Rude. It's offensively impolite or bad-mannered. If you're rude, you're intentionally wanting to make another person feel bad. Serious. Someone that is serious is uh, someone that is not joking or intending to be funny. When you're serious, you don't, you don't care about being funny or making jokes. So you're always, you know, straight to the point. You don't make jokes. Everything is sad. Everything is a square. I'm not serious. But being serious is not something bad, not, nor something good. It's just a way of being. Short-tempered, quick to lose one's temper. So, when you are short-tempered, it's like you have... If any small things happen to you, you will get angry and mad. Unfriendly. When someone or some, when someone is unfriendly, it's hard to make friends with that person. We can say that this girl is being unfriendly with this person right here. Maybe he's intense and that's why she's like this, but... She's being unfriendly with him. Let's see some verbs. Agree. When you agree is when you think positive or yes about something. Yes, you can think yes. <laughs> analyze. When you analyze is when you take your moment to check 
all of the different things on something. So you're analyzing it. Apply. When you apply for something, like you can apply for a job, it's when you're trying to get into a position. So you send the requirements that they need. Maybe it's a resume, maybe it's filling a form, but that is applying. Be fed up with something or with someone. When you're fed up with something or someone, it's when you're really, really angry and you had patience, but you lost it. You cannot continue with this. For example, this girl is fed up with this laptop that doesn't want to work. That's not a way to get fed up. Oh my God, you need to chill. Take some chamomile tea or something. Chat. To chat, it's basically to have a small talk with different people. Nowadays, chat to chat, it's basically to, work, to talk in a, you know, in a digital way through Facebook, Instagram, DMs, or any other thing. Check something out. To check something out, it's basically to look for, like, to see how it is. And it have multiple definitions too. To check out, it's to prove and after, an after an investigation to be the case or in order to prove that everything is correct. The first two leads, check out. I'll assume the third one is also valid. Check out, to withdraw an item. It's to examine, inspect, look at closely or ogle to investigate. It's to record someone as leaving the premises or as taking something therefrom. It's to confirm and pay for foods and services at a facility when leaving. Okay, those are the different definitions of check out. To design. When you design is when you are thinking of how the things will look like. To develop. When you develop is when you're changing stuff for the better. For example, here we have this insect that is like this. It can move slowly, it cannot fly, but then it was developing itself and now it's a butterfly and it can fly and it's more beautiful. Do for a living. What you do for a living is what you're working on or you're working for, okay? So if I ask you, what do you do for a living? I can say, oh, I am a teacher. That's what I do for a living. To draw. When you draw, it's when you do this, you know, draw. You make, well, I will draw right now. I can do this. This is like a heart. I'm drawing right now. I can write the word hi. That is drawing. Enjoy. To enjoy is to feel good about the things that you're doing, that you feel really good. You, that's why we can say enjoy your food. So when you're eating it, you will be feeling good. Evaluate. When you evaluate something, it's when you see the good things and the bad things of the same thing, and then you see, like, yes, it's worth it, or no, I would not do this. To go over. It's to consider, examine, or check something. For example, could you go over this report and correct any mistakes? So this person is now is going to be checking all of these to see if everything is correct. Hire. It's to obtain the temporary use of something for an agreed payment. It's to employ someone for wages. When you're an applicant and you send your resume, then people can hire you and then you start working. Interview. This is the last step or the step that happens before hiring you. This is a set of questions that a person uh, asks you so to see if you're going to be good for the job that they are that you're applying for. To laugh. <laughs> that is laughing. Okay. <laughs> this is also laughing. Lighten up. It's to become or cause to become less serious or gloomy and more ch ch cheerful. Sorry. So to lighten up, it's to make everything a little bit less serious. To be, you know, to, not everything needs to be so serious. So we lighten up things, and now it's a little bit more agree, agree, agreeable or cheerful. Make a decision. It's to consider something carefully and officially state what should be done about it. To officially decide something. When you make a decision, it's when you take a yes or you take a no. Okay, you go through one way or to the other.
make up one's mind or someone's mind. It's to make a decision, to decide. So you can make up an idea, that way you're deciding. To manage, be in charge of a business, organization, or undertaking, or to run. When you manage is when you're the person, the boss, basically, and you see if you have employees, these people are going to be doing this, and these other people are going to be doing that. That is managing. To place or put one's trust in something, okay? Is to believe that someone or something is reliable, good, honest, effective, etc. So when you put your trust in or you place your trust in something, like I place my trust in this uh, backpack because it will help me. I know that it's going to be good. That is that. To realize, it's to become fully aware of something as a fact or understanding clearly. When you realize something is when you see, oh, okay, yes, this is it. That is to realize. To release, not to be confused. Realize and release. When you release something is when you have it within you, like this person may have this butterfly in his hand, in his hand but she or he released it. So it's now able to go to any place that it wants. Some people like to fish, and they, when they catch the fishes, they release it again. To sign. When you sign, is when you put your specific sign in a place. It can be your name, it can be a different type of writing. For example, my sign, it's like this. Let me see if I can do it like this. Whoa. It's something like this. This can be my sign. Okay, very good. We're going to come back here when we get to the grammar. But for now, let's go to the book. And we're going to be starting with the unit 10. I like working with people. I don't. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I, I do like working with people that I know. It's, it's, a, it's a good thing. It's easier to do things like that. And in this unit, in the first part and the second part that it's for the next video, we're going to be discussing job skills and discussing kinds of job, okay? And to start, we're gonna be looking at this snapshot. 21st century skills. Hmm, interesting. Some skills that are now needed in this century, in the 21st century. Let's see, people. Let's think about ourselves right now. Can you use technology to find the information you need? This is something that you're able to do. Can you evaluate the information you find? You, can you think if yes, it is correct? No, this is weird. This shouldn't be like this. Do you work well with different kinds of people? Hmm, hmm, I have a problem with it. <coughs> can you communicate with people from different cultures? Interesting, really interesting. Are you good at analyzing and solving problems? This is something really important right now. Can you develop new ideas? Do you enjoy learning new things? Can you teach others how to do the things? Well, I'm a teacher, so I'm supposed to be. Okay. Well, all of these skills are really, really important nowadays. If you have multiple of these skills, you will be able to get jobs easily or at least do good things with them. Okay? Do you think that you have these skills or what skills do you have from this? You can comment them, comment them down below. Okay, let's continue now before going to the grammar. Here we have a conversation. I love playing video games. Hey, me too. I will spend hours and hours playing video games as much as I can. Okay, so we're going to be listening to part A and part B of this conversation. And when we listen to part B, you're going to be asking this, uh, answering these questions. What is one problem with the job and what does Jeff decide to do? Okay, let's Pay attention, okay? Let's listen. Unit 10. I like working with people. Page 64. Exercise 2. Conversation. I love playing video games. Part A. Listen and practice. What are you doing this summer? Nothing much. I'm broke. I need to find a job. So do I. Have you seen anything interesting? No, not yet. Why don't you get a job at your uncle's restaurant? No way. They're open evenings and weekends, and I hate working on weekends. 
Well, I don't mind working on weekends. Besides, I really enjoy working with people. Do you think he would give me a job? Why don't you go over this weekend and talk to him? Yeah, I'll do that. Oh, I found one for you. Video game tester. That sounds like fun. I love playing video games. I'll check that one out. Page 64. Exercise 2. Part B. Listen to the rest of the conversation. What is one problem with the job? What does Jeff decide to do? What do they say about the job? Let's see. You must have experience using different devices and platforms because you have to test the games to see if there are any bugs. And you need to be able to work well with a team. That's no problem. Look, it says that sometimes you may need to work overtime and on weekends. Well, that is a problem. But the pay is really good, and I think you'd enjoy it. You've got a point. I guess it is an interesting opportunity. Yeah, I'll apply for it. Okay, very good. Did you get the answers? Remember that you can go back in the video to listen again. Okay, so what is one problem with the job and what does Jeff decide to do? Well, Jeff may need to work overtime and on weekends sometimes. That is something really bad. Never take a job like this unless you are really, really needing it. And Jeff decides to apply for the job anyway. So, he needs the money. He doesn't care. Okay, very good. Now, we're gonna be looking at the grammar's, gra the grammar's? grammar focus for today. That is the gerunds and short responses. This is an easy, easy topic actually. It's quite easy, uh, but as always, let's use our, you know, our things to help ourselves. To start, what is a gerund? What is a gerund? You may be thinking, oh, a gerund is a verb in ing because you know we have travel and in, and then we have. You know, let me see if I can get another color. And then we have ing. So, oh, it's traveling, you know, I'm traveling, you're traveling. And that is uh, a gerund. But no, it is not necessarily a verb. A gerund is a noun. It is a thing. Traveling is a thing. Working is a thing. Singing is a thing. Writing is a thing. All of those are things. A gerund is a thing made by a verb in ing. Okay? So, if you take a verb like jump, if you jump, that is a verb. You're, it's an action. If you are jumping, that is a present continuous sentence. That's something that you are doing. But if you like jumping, you like that thing, okay? A gerund is a thing, a noun, made from a verb, like travel, and put in ing. It's like the thing of the action, okay? So, you can travel. You can go traveling. But, if you like traveling, traveling in this case, it is a gerund. I hope that you understand this part. Basically, a gerund is a thing, okay? Remember, gerund is a thing. It is a noun. That is the thing that you need to remember. So you can say, I like traveling, I, lo I love jumping, I like eating pizza, okay? All of those are gerunds. I hope that everything is clear right there. Help. Very good. So, the things with this topic, after you understand that, it's really easy. It's just how you can be agreeing and disagreeing with things. Hmm. What would you say is agree or disagree? Basically, to agree is to have the same opinion about the person or the thing that it's giving you the idea. If I am giving you the idea that I like traveling and you think in the same way you are agreeing, Okay? If you don't think in the same way, you're disagreeing. Okay? Very good. Something to keep that in mind because 
you can get confused when we get to negatives, okay? So if I am saying a positive, an affirmative statement, like I like traveling, the way to agree is to say, so do I. So I think the same, so do I. If you disagree, you say, I don't, okay? I don't think so. And if I have this sentence, I hate working on Mondays. If you think the same, it's not like to say yes or no. It's not the same. It is not the same, okay? If you think the same, you agree. If you don't think the same, you disagree. I hate working on Mondays. Oh, I agree. So do I. I hate working on Mondays too. But if you disagree, so you are the opposite of this sentence, the opposite of hate is love. So you can say, yeah, I love, or no, I love working on Mondays, okay? That is disagreeing. Something to, I'm sorry that I'm repeating myself too much, but that is something really important. To agree is to think the same, and to disagree is to think different. It's not yes or no, because it can change in the context. I am good at singing. Oh, so am I. If you're not, oh, I'm not, or I'm not good at singing, or I am bad at singing. That way you're disagreeing, okay? And if you notice something, here we have simple present, like, um, I like, I hate, I love. So you know that if you make the question, it would be, do you like, do you think, do you hate? So we will use do in this case. So do I, so do I, so do I. I am good at singing. In this case, we're using the verb be. So, so am I, so am I. Okay, very good. I'm very good at writing. So am I. Oh, I am terrible. You're kidding? That's way to disagree. But then, if you have a negative statement, you can either agree by always saying something negative or disagree by saying something positive, okay? If the negative statement is, I don't like working with computers, if you agree, if you feel the same, then you also don't like working with computers. So you can say the word, neither do I, or not either, neither do I. If you disagree, so you think the opposite of this that is negative, you will say something in positive, okay? I don't like working with computers. Really? I do like it, okay? I can't stand selling things. Oh, I can do it. I feel good with that. But if you agree with them, you also feel a negative thing of this. You say, neither can I, because we're using this, okay? I can't stand selling things, neither can I. Oh, I can do it if I disagree. I don't like talking in front of people. Oh, neither do I. Really? I love that. I have... If... The sentence is this, I don't like talking in front of people. My personal opinion would be a disagreement because I would say, oh, I have no problem with that. So something to keep in mind. If it's affirmative statement and you feel the same, you say positive too. If you disagree, you say negative. If it's a negative statement and you agree, you say something negative too. You say neither do I, etc. neither can I. If you disagree of the negative statement, then you say something positive. Oh, I can do it. I love that. I'm excellent. I like it. Okay? Very good. I hope that you understand this part. If not, let's see here. Let's see some other affirmative uh, statements with Germans. I love playing video games. You can say, oh, so do I. Or I don't, if you disagree. I hate working on, on weekends. So do I. I, I hate working on weekends too. Or disagree. Really? I like it. I don't know who, who person, what person can like working on weekends, but okay. I'm going, I'm good at solving problems. If you agree, so am I. Is the, if you disagree, oh, I'm not. So basically, the way to follow is that if you agree, you can say these things. If you're agreeing in an affirmative, you say so, the verb that we are using in the sentence, and then your pronoun. So do I, so do I. In this case, I'm good at solving problems. I'm, I am, so, so am I. If it's in negative statements, you will do the same, but instead of so, neither, okay? When you are agreeing. I don't mind working on even. Oh, neither do I. 
I'm not good at selling. Neither am I. I can't stand commuting. Neither can I. Okay? Very good. So, the only things that you need to remember is that to agree is to think in the same way. If it's affirmative, you agree in an affirmative way. If it's a negative, you agree in a negative way. Okay? It will be like this. And to disagree is to have a different opinion. If you disagree in an affirmative statement, it will be a negative statement. If you disagree in a negative statement, it will be a positive statement. Okay? Very good. I hope that you don't got confused with that, but if you did, you can go back in the video. Other verbs or phrases followed by gerunds. Usually, we can have some verbs that are followed by gerunds, like love, hate, good, mind, stand. But we can also have like, enjoy, be interested in. For example, I can say, I like eating pizza. Eating, it's the gerund. I enjoy spending time with my family. Spending will be the gerund. I'm interested in, I don't know, hiking. Hiking will be the gerund, okay? Very good. I hope that you understand this part. If not, you can ask some questions to your teacher or you can go back on the video and watch it again, okay? So let's do a small exercise here that is really easy. You're gonna be matching the phrases in column A and B to make statements about yourself, okay? So you can take your time to do this, to, you know, to practice with yourself, like how to use the sentences together, okay? You can take your time to do it. Now, if you finished, you know, each one of these will be different for everybody because everybody have different opinions. But for example, let me, let me see. Working the night shift. I can stand working the night shift because I will not be good with that. Working on weekends. I hate working on weekends. I am not good with that. I don't like it. Working alone. I don't mind working alone because I have no problem with that, okay? And you can have different things, okay? Very good. I hope that you like this part. Now, let's go to this pronunciation about unreleased and released and sounds, okay? This is going to be doing a better example of this pronunciation, so let's listen. Page 65. Exercise 4. Pronunciation. Unreleased and released. T and D. Part A. Listen and practice. Notice that when the sound T or D at the end of a word is followed by a consonant, it's unreleased. When it is followed by a vowel sound, it's released. Unreleased. She's not good at dealing with stress. I hate working on Sundays. You need to manage money well. Released. He's not a good artist. They really hate it. I need a cup of coffee. Okay, very good. Did you get the difference with them? Okay, so we have the t and the d sounds at the end of words. And if they are followed by a consonant like G, W, or T, it's unreleased. So you need to pronounce it, okay? When it is followed by a vowel, the sound is released. So you can connect them. So you can say, she's not good. She's not good at dealing with the stress. So you're pronouncing it. I hate working. Okay, you need to make you need to make to manage money well. But if it's followed like by a consonant like a i a again, you can put it together. He's not a he's not a he's not a good artist. They really hate it, hate it, hate it, it it, it hate it. I need a I need a need a I need a cup of coffee. Okay, very good. You can you know. Practice this by yourself. So let's listen one more time. She's she's not a good uh, she's not good at dealing with the stress. I hate working on Sundays. You need to make 
you need to manage money well. I'm sorry for that. He's not a good artist. They really hate it. I need a cup of coffee. Okay? Very good. Very good. Okay. The last thing for today, it's going to be this listening. My ideal career. You're going to be listening to people talking about the kind of work they're looking for. And you're going to be selecting which one was the ideal job for each one of them. And also, you're going to be looking for two reasons each person gives or for his or her ideal job. Okay, so let's listen. Page 66. Exercise 6. Listening. My ideal career. Part A. Listen to people talk about the kind of work they are looking for. Then check each person's ideal job. 1. Alex. What kind of job do I have in mind? Well, I don't want a regular 9 to 5 job, and eventually I'd like to work for myself. I'm good at drawing, and I think it would be fun to design people's homes and businesses. I've actually been reading blogs about designing, and I'm looking into programs at universities. That sounds great. Have you tried designing anything? Well, yes. I've actually done some drawings recently of my dream house. Would you like to see them? Definitely. 2. Evelyn What kind of career are you planning for yourself? I don't know. I think I'd like to have a job where I can help people. Everybody else in my family is in business. And I'm not good at selling or negotiating. It's just not for me. I know I'd love working overseas, though. Maybe in a children's hospital in a developing country. But that's a long way away. I have to get into medical school first, and that's not going to be easy. 3. Edward So, what kind of job are you looking for? Well, I haven't made up my mind. I enjoy working with people, and I love traveling. I don't want a job where I'm stuck in an office all day. Are you interested in working in business? That's where you can sometimes make good money. I'm not really interested in making a lot of money at this point in my life. I just want to get out and see the world. I'll worry about money later. Very good. Did you get the answers? Let's check. Well, Alex wants to be an architect, Evelyn wants to be a doctor, and Edward wants to be a flight attendant. If you have those answers, very good. Very, very, very good. Okay, that will be everything for today. It was a long class, but I think it was good. On the next class, we're going to be continuing with the rest of this unit, and we're going to be seeing classes with because. Hmm, interesting. Okay, so hello, I hope that you look forward for it. And that's everything for today. So, see you on the next time. Bye.